everyone welcome back i'm gabby if you're new so i got the idea to film this video pretty spontaneously somehow i've acquired a large amount of books that i haven't read yet i say somehow like i haven't acquired them myself <laughs> like i've bought all of these books myself pretty much it's my own fault i don't know why i say somehow i have a lot of books right now so i thought i'd give you guys a little book haul it's not going to be all the books i haven't read yet like i'm not going to give you guys my full tbr i do want to film a video like that let me know if you guys would want to see that basically just show you guys all the books i own but haven't read yet i think that'd be a really fun video to film these ones are probably the ones that are closest up on my tbr and just the ones i'm really excited to get into and i've heard a lot about so yeah that's what we're gonna be doing today i'm just gonna talk you guys through all the books that i've bought recently and i'm really excited to read so first I want to start out with a book that I'm reading right now because I'm really excited about it and I just really want to talk about it because I have some thoughts. I just started it yesterday. I really love it so far. It's a super popular book so I'm sure you guys will have read it. I'm gonna grab it. It's on my bed. Sorry I have the reading light on it. So right now I'm reading The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is such a popular book. I've seen this everywhere. People rave about it. It's won an award. It's really well loved. So I did pick it up for that reason. I've had this book for a really long time. I don't know why it's taken me so long to pick it up. Probably because I read a lot at work. I just always bring books to work. And then if it's not busy and customers aren't coming in, I'll just read a few pages in the meantime. But I find I have to be kind of selective about the ones that I do bring because I tried bringing this book to work and I could not get into it. I thought I wasn't going to like it. I read about three or four chapters and I was so confused I didn't know what was going on I was like I don't think this book's for me like I was kind of mad at myself that I couldn't get into it because I know it's so well loved and everyone just says it's their favorite book so I was like why can't I get into this and I also felt like kind of dumb that I was confused and then I thought about it more and I was like I just can't read some books at work because I feel like my mind's not like fully in the book I always bring romance books to work because then if you miss like a paragraph or a couple lines you still know what's going on like you're not going to be lost where this type of book I feel like you have to be be attentive like you have to know what's going on especially the first two chapters i think that's more what it was is the first i'd say two three chapters of this book there's like a lot of world building and just like a lot of characters like they're introducing a lot of characters some of them aren't really even important they're not really mentioned in i don't want to say the rest of the book because i haven't read the full book but on chapter 7 page 58 and i'd say the first two three chapters there was a lot of characters being introduced and since then i haven't heard really anything about them so i think that's why i was confused initially is just because there was so many characters a lot going on to just kind of build the world and the scenery. I'm not sure why I'm going off on this long-winded story but basically when I started this book I didn't really get into it. I was confused. I didn't think I was gonna love it. So I did DNF it for maybe like a couple weeks and yesterday I picked it up again and I couldn't put it down. So captivating. Such a good story. I can't wait to read more today. I've been so into it and just like immersed in this world. I don't know how to pronounce like any of the characters names. Like I just think it's funny. I feel like I'm just making up their names. Like I can say Achilles but other than that like I don't don't know but I really love this book so far. I've heard it's really sad and really emotional and I know there's also war in this book so I haven't got to that part yet obviously like I said I'm only on chapter seven. But yeah let me know in the comments if you guys have read this book and your thoughts on it because I'd be curious to know. The first book I'm going to show you guys I've already started just because I was so excited about it. This is by one of my favorite authors ever. I love her books. It is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. So excited about this book. I just love Emily Henry in general. I love Beach Read. I love people we meet on vacation. I've read both her books. She's such an amazing writer writes really good contemporary romance she's just an author that i trust so any book she comes out with i'm going to be really excited about i started this one and then i went back to song of achilles so i have two books on the go right now which i don't do often i usually just read one book at a time but i'm on chapter five and loving it so far i just love her books they're such easy reads and i feel like they just make me happy beach read and people we meet on vacation are great because i feel like the name just says it all they're just great books to relax and read on the beach and i feel like this is that as well this would be a really good Good vacation book if you're going to the cabin, the beach, if you're going on any kind of trip. They're really good escapism. I also love books where the characters also love books and that's like in the plot. I can give you guys a little bit about it so I'll read the back. It says Nora Stevens' life is books. She's read them all and she is not that type of heroine. Not the plunky one, not the laid-back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister Libby. Her young younger sister. They have a really good connection. I'm really loving their relationship and how it's written about in the book. Right now that's kind of what the book is focusing on. They took a trip to I think North Carolina. Yeah it's Sunshine Falls, North Carolina. They go there because one of their favorite books that just came out, Nora's working with the author and that book is based in Sunshine Falls, North Carolina. Her and her sister both love that book so they go to Sunshine Falls and then she keeps bumping into this guy named 
Charlie, who I think he's also like an editor. He has a similar job to her. And at first they don't really get along, they kind of butt heads. But right now their banter is so good and I can just tell like a romance is brewing there. He's her love interest. That's kind of what's going on in the book right now. Her books look so good together. Like, can I just show you? Hang on. So this is Beach Read. People we meet on vacation and book lovers. They all look so good. Like the spines look so good. The same font and bright colors. They're just such fun summer books. These just look so cute on a bookshelf. I love Emily Henry, if you can't tell. Oh, side note, I also found this book at Costco for $12.99. Yeah, if you haven't picked this book up already, check Costco if you have one near you because the books there, I don't know how they price them so much lower. I guess since they buy them in bulk, they can do that. Speaking of Costco, I got a few other books from there. The first one I got is called Mexican gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I picked this book up because my friend actually recommended it to me. We had a little bookstore date. Basically we just walked around a bookstore and pointed to books and said oh I've read that. Have you read that? That one's really good. I didn't like that one. Like we just basically did that for an hour and a half. I was having a great time. I loved it. But anyway, she said this book was really good. And I was like, I've never heard of that book before. Like, literally, I've seen that book nowhere, which is always my favorite. Like, I don't know. I love reading really hyped up books, but I also love discovering books that no one's really talking about. I just think that's fun too. I'm trying to remember exactly what this book's about. I think it's based in the 50s. Yeah, 1950s Mexico. It's a reimagining of the classic gothic horror novel, a story about an isolated mansion in 1950s Mexico and the brave socialite drawn to its treacherous secrets. It sounded like there was going to be a lot of drama in this book, which I love. I don't have any drama in my own life, so I have to outsource it you know, just to keep me entertained. I'll finish reading this here. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin, Naomi Tapoda heads to High Place, a distant house in the Mexican countryside. Naomi is an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous debutante, more suited for cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing, but she's also tough, smart, and not afraid. Not of her cousin's new English husband, a stranger who is both menacing and alluring. Not of his father, the ancient patriarch who seems fascinated by Naomi, and not even of the house itself, which begins to invade Naomi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Naomi's only ally is the family's youngest son, but he too may be hiding a dark secret. As Naomi begins to unearth stories of violence and madness, she is slowly drawn into a terrifying yet seductive world, a world that may be impossible to escape. Doesn't that just sound so drama-filled? Fabulous? I thought so. It's also a really short read, so I feel like I could fly through this. This just seemed very my vibe, and my friend said she liked it, so I trust her opinion, but I'm really excited to read this and text her after and give her my thoughts on it. Next is another book I got from Costco, actually. This this one's called One Italian Summer and it's by Rebecca Surley. So I actually saw this at Indigo the one day and I almost bought it. I remember reading the back and I thought it was really interesting and then I saw it at Costco for way cheaper. So I'll read you the little blurb here. So it says, when Katie's mother dies, she is left reeling. Carol wasn't just Katie's mom, but her best friend and first phone call. Even Katie's husband can't seem to get through to her. To make matters worse, the mother-daughter trip of a lifetime looms, going to Positano, following the very same route Carol did as a young woman. Katie has been waiting years for Carol to take her and now suddenly she is faced with embarking on the adventure alone but as soon as she steps foot on the beautiful Amalfi coast weighed by the stunning cliff sides delectable food and charming hotel staff Katie begins to feel her mother's spirit and then Carol appears for real in the flesh healthy and suntanned and 30 years old Katie doesn't understand what is happening or how but over the course of her time in Italy Katie gets to know Carol in this new form and soon she must reconcile the mother who knew everything with the young woman who does not yet have a clue one Italian Summer is Rebecca Surley's next great love story, a transcendent novel about how we move on after loss and how the people we love never truly leave us. So I thought that sounded really good. Just the concept of meeting one of your parents when they're your own age kind of blows my mind. That's something I think about. Do you guys ever think about that? I'm always just like, I wonder if my mom and I would have been friends if we met when we were the same age. And I also know I'm gonna love the scenery in this. I love the idea of Italy. I can't say I love Italy because I've never been there. I always watch people's vlogs when they go to Italy and I just live vicariously through them. So yeah, I thought this would be a really good summer read. Next book I got is just one from Amazon. This is Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid so much. She's probably my favorite author ever. I've never read anything by her that's been bad. I thought I'd just pick up another one of her books for the summer. I saw Ava Jules talk about this book in her most recent book video, but she said she really liked it and she devoured it in like one sitting. So yeah, that's always a good sign. I feel like Taylor Jenkins Reid just never lets me down. Her and Colleen Hoover, I just feel like I can always trust if I pick up one of their books. I just know I'm gonna enjoy it. Really excited to read this. I love any 
anything Taylor Jenkins reads, so I'm excited about this one too. I'm gonna say I'm excited about all of them because obviously, like, I wouldn't have bought them if I'm not. The next book I'm gonna talk about is one that's probably next on my TBR. I wanna read this one soon. I'll probably read this as soon as I finish Song of Achilles and Book Lovers, but this is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. I've seen this book everywhere. I feel like everyone's reading it. I did not know it was this thick. Like, how many pages is this? Yeah, it's like over 500 pages, which I definitely have like large book fear, if that's what you call it. Like, anything over 400 pages, I get kind of scared. I don't know why, because I read one or two books every week. I don't know why just taking a little bit longer with one book would scare me, but for some reason, whenever I see a book that's over 400 pages, I get intimidated really quickly. So I've seen a lot of people talk about this in book videos. I'm pretty sure this book centers around a set of twins. Naomi is the main character. She literally leaves on her wedding night to go back to her hometown to help her twin sister, and then her sister ends up leaving her daughter behind, so she ends up having to take care of her niece. She meets Knox, who I guess is her love interest, and beyond that, I don't really know what else this book is about, but I think it's just a good romance. I always read the synopsis on Amazon, or like wherever I'm buying it, but after that I just forget, and I have like a lot of books going on. I feel like it's gonna be good, and everyone's talking about it, so hopefully it lives up to that. Whenever so many people are talking about a book, I always want to read it, just so I can give my own thoughts on it. So yeah, like I said, I'll probably read this one next. The next book I picked up is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. So I was watching a Steph Boer video, and she was talking about this book, and she just sold me on it, so I ordered it on Amazon. That's literally all there is to it. She said this book was based in Alaska, and I'm very into scenery and books and like where they take place. I feel like that just always draws me to certain books. Books are like an escape for me, so if I can picture some place in my head and it's really beautiful, for some reason it just makes the story a little bit better. I just like imagining a different place, and especially places I haven't been. I just like getting more insight on what they look like because I obviously love to travel a lot more than I do. So basically, she lives with her mom in Toronto and finds out that her dad isn't doing well, so she goes back to Alaska to live with him and kind of repair their relationship. And then her dad isn't around a lot, so she ends up being around Jonah a lot, who it says here he's an Alaskan pilot who helps keep her father's charter plane company operational. So she hangs out with him. I'm guessing romance ensues. But yeah, Steph Boer said she really liked it, and I trust her opinion. I usually love the books that she recommends, so really excited to read this one as well. And then the next book I got is Bear Town by Frederick Backman. So this is another book that my friend recommended to me, which I was so surprised because she said this is about a junior hockey team and she doesn't like hockey. So I was like, really? Like you liked that book? She was like, yeah, I know. It's about a junior hockey team. Like, can you imagine me liking that? And I was like, um, no. And she was like, no, you should read it. It's so good. I do really like hockey, not as much as the rest of my family. My family is obsessed with hockey to the point where I think it's like a little ridiculous and it's like a little much, but I'm just used to that by now. So I do have a lot of knowledge about hockey, not all of it that I'm super proud of. It's very much useless knowledge to me, but maybe eventually one day it'll be useful. I don't know. But I thought I would really connect with this book because a lot of my life has been surrounded by hockey, whether I like it or not. <laughs> I've actually heard a lot about this author. I'm pretty sure he wrote, what's that book called? A Man Called Ove. It's a pretty popular book. I hear a lot of people talk about that one. And then also Anxious People. I don't usually read male authors. I just don't really feel like I connect with them very often. It's just very few and far between that I end up picking up a book by a male author. Probably because I read a lot of romance and I feel like women just write romance a little bit better. And then there's just obviously more female authors writing romance, right? So I'll read you guys the back because it sounds really good. So it says, people say Beartown is finished, but down the lake stands an old ice rink built generations ago by the working men who founded the town. And that rink is the only reason people in Beartown believe tomorrow will be better than today. Their junior hockey team is about to compete in the national championships and they actually have a shot at winning. All the hopes and dreams of the town now rest on the shoulders of a handful of teenage boys. Being responsible for the expectations of an entire town is a heavy burden. And the semi-final match is the catalyst for a violent event that leaves a young girl trying traumatized and a town in turmoil. Here is a story no one wants to believe since the truth would mean the end of the dream. Accusations are made and like ripples on a pond, they travel through all of Beartown, leaving no resident unaffected. I thought that sounded so good immediately. I wanted to know what violent event happened and it was just so enticing to me. I was really interested in this book. My boyfriend actually bought this book for me. We were just having a day of errands and we were driving and he just drove to Indigo and bought me a book and a coffee. I was kind of just like, this is why we're dating. Like, thank you. He told me I could only pick out one book though, which 
which was very hard I will say I spent a really long time like I took that decision very seriously I was like okay this has to be a really good book like this has to be worthy of him buying it for me so yeah I got this book because I felt like he would like this book too not that he really reads very much but you know I was really glad he bought me this and I'm super excited to read it this is another one that I want to read soon because I also want to tell my friend about it after I read it next book I picked up is The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave so I've seen this book around a lot I've seen it on book talk I also saw Ava Jules talk about this in her most recent book video she also said this is the kind of book that you read in like one or two sittings it also says it was in Reese's book club I always really trust books that have that on it that say they're in like Reese Witherspoon's book club and that she loved them because she has really good taste I find whenever I read books that have that on there I always really enjoy them and they're just really high quality well-written books we stand Reese Witherspoon obviously like I think she knows what she's doing she's also producing where the crawdads sing and it's gonna be a movie now that book was also in her book club I didn't love that book but I did love the story if that makes sense I don't know I just felt like the first bit of that book was super boring but the story of it was really good and Daisy Edgar Jones is starring in it as Kaya so I'm so excited for that I think it comes out in July I don't know why I'm talking about where the crawdads sing right now like I get so distracted but anyway I just really trust whatever books have that on there I think it's more of like a mystery which I do like every once in a while I mean if we're gonna be honest I just read anything fiction but I usually read romance and then I'll hop between like mystery thrillers contemporary romances I do the odd historical fiction that's kind of what I read if you're curious I'll read you guys the little blurb so it says before Owen Michaels disappears he manages to smuggle a note to his beloved wife of one year protect her despite her confusion and fear Hannah Hall knows exactly to whom the note refers Owen's 16 year old daughter Bailey Bailey who lost her mother tragically as a child. Bailey who wants absolutely nothing to do with her new stepmother. As Hannah's increasingly desperate calls to Owen go unanswered, she quickly realizes her husband isn't who he says he was and that Bailey just may hold the key to figuring out Owen's true identity and why he really disappeared. Hannah and Bailey set out to discover the truth but as they start putting together the pieces of Owen's past, they soon realize they are also building a new future, one neither of them could have anticipated. I thought this would be the kind of one that I wouldn't want to put down. I'm really excited to read it. I also really like the cover. I think it's very pretty. I don't like when books have this type of edge though. I don't know if you can see that. To me this is a pet peeve. Also hardcovers. I hate hardcover books and when books have stickers on them. Whenever I go to Indigo there's always books that say like Heather's Choice. And I'm always just like, who is Heather? Like, I don't want that on there. Those are some of my book pet peeves, in case you were wondering. I, I don't know. I'm getting so distracted today, guys. It's like insane. All right, the next book I picked up is called The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. So I've heard a lot about Lucy Foley. I always see her other book. I think it's called The Guest List. I haven't read that one yet, but every time I'm in to go, for some reason, I pick it up and read it. I always think it sounds good, but then I look at the price and I'm always like, why is this small book $21? So yeah, I don't know. For that reason, I've never bought it. This one I've seen a lot around TikTok and a lot of people have been talking about it on book talk also the cover just looks really enticing i love the pink on like the dark kind of apartment scene also paris i've actually been to paris and i didn't love it don't hate me but i was not a fan of paris when i went there anyway i do really like when books are based in paris or in europe in general because i think europe is very beautiful this sounded really good a little bit like a mystery so i'll read you the little her bonnet. So it says, Jess needs a fresh start. She's broke and alone and she's just left her job under less than ideal circumstances. Her half-brother Ben didn't sound thrilled when she asked if she could crash with him for a bit, but he didn't say no and surely everything will look better from Paris. Only when she shows up to find a very nice apartment, could Ben really have afforded this? He's not there. The longer Ben stays missing, the more Jess starts to dig into her brother's situation and the more questions she has. Ben's neighbors are an eclectic bunch and not particularly friendly. Jess may have come to Paris to escape her past, but it's starting to look like it's Ben's future that's in doubt. Everyone's a neighbor, everyone's a suspect, and everyone knows something they're not telling. That just sounded so good. Like something I couldn't put down. Sticking with books that are in Reese's book club, I guess. This is The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. This is one that I'd seen in Indigo quite a few times, never bit the bullet and bought it, but the last time I was there I was like, you know what, I've been looking at this book for a long time. I feel like it'll be a good summer read, so I did let myself pick it up. I will read you the back. It is a perfect August morning when Elle Bishop awakens in the back Blackwood's Cape Cod cabin where her family has spent every summer for generations. But this morning is different. Last night Elle and her oldest friend had a secret passionate encounter outside in the darkness while their spouses chatted away inside. Now Elle will have to decide between the world she has made with her much loved husband Peter and the life she'd always imagined would be hers with her childhood love Jonas if a tragic event had not forever changed the course of their lives. Spellbinding and surprising the paper palace unfolds over 24 hours and across 50 years as decades of family 
legacies, love, lies, secrets, and one unspeakable childhood incident led Elle to the precipice of a life-changing decision. I just feel like it'll be a good summer read because it's based at a cabin and I always love that kind of vibe. I always wish I had a cabin and I could go up to a cabin in the summer, so I like reading about that too. And I've heard a few good things about it. This is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is another book that my friend recommended to me. She said it was so good. I have heard a little bit about this on Book Talk. I've seen it before, so I did recognize it when she told me it was good. I think essentially this is just about a girl that has an affair with one of her teachers and then years later she kind of realizes how fucked up it was. That's basically what my friend told me about it. I should read this because I'm sure I can explain that better. So it says, the year 2000. Bright, ambitious, and yearning for adulthood, 15-year-old Vanessa Y becomes entangled in an affair with Jacob Strain, her magnetic and guileful 42-year-old English teacher. I don't like that. I don't like age gaps in books. I feel like anything more than 10 years is creepy. When you're really young, five years. When you're a little bit older, 10. I always cap it at 10. Like love is love, but also 10 years in my opinion. And then it says the year 2017, amid the rising wave of allegations against powerful men, a reckoning is coming due. Strain has been accused of sexual abuse by a formal student who reaches out to Vanessa. And now Vanessa suddenly finds herself facing an impossible choice. Remain silent, firm in the belief that her teenage self willingly engaged in this relationship or redefine herself and the events of her past. But how can Vanessa reject her first love, the man who fundamentally transformed her and has been a persistent presence in her life. Is it possible that the man she loved as a teenager and who professed to worship only her may be far different from what she has always believed? Alternating between Vanessa's present and her past, My Dark Vanessa juxtaposes memory and trauma with the breathless excitement of a teenage girl discovering the power her own body can wield. Thought-provoking and impossible to put down, this is a masterful portrayal of troubled adolescence and its repercussions that raises vital questions about agency, consent, complicity, and okay well it says continue but i don't know where you continue to that just sounded like a very captivating and unique story and not something i read about very often i think it's gonna make me a little bit angry just reading that because like i said i don't like huge age gaps my friend recommended it so i trust her so these are all the books that we talked about today i'm very excited to read all of them like i said i always book journal every book i read and then i film book talks i have i think three book talks coming as soon as i read these ones i'll give you my thoughts and opinions as well but those are all the books that i wanted to talk to you guys about today thanks so much for watching if you stayed until the end comment down below about these books if you've read them if you have them on your tbr literally anything and i'll see you guys in my next video very soon bye i'm a little caught up i'm a little shaken you are at someone i could make a mistake but